Welcome back to Financial Issues. My name's Dan Seward. It's great to be here. We would, uh, you know, what a program yesterday. I've got a ton of email. A lot of people, I had a lot of people request a CD of the program. I'm not sure why. Uh, I did tell a couple people that we would send it out to them. But here's the thing, folks. Um, you can download the program. You can, you know, podcast it and down or download the program. If you go to AFR.net, uh, you can uh, find that program, yesterday's program, and download it. Then I suppose, I'm not 100% sure of this, but I'm, suppo- I'm supposing that if you did that, you could then produce a CD right off your computer of the program. Maybe I'm wrong about that, uh, but that would probably be your best bet because a number of people said they wanted to pass it along. I'm not sure what part of the program. Most people just asked for the program. But anyway, um, got, a, got a lot of response. Uh, the vast majority of the response uh, was positive and encouraging. As a matter of fact, just about all of it was. The only, uh, and, and a lot of it, for all of you uh, folks that called in yesterday, you guys were the ones that got all the compliments, which I love. Because I keep saying we have the greatest listeners on talk radio uh, here on this program. And I'm so grateful to all of you because you play an important part of of uh in the program and i sure appreciate it so i love the opportunity to interact with our listeners uh on the air and uh got a lot of compliments about the listeners yesterday and some of the great comments that all of you made when you weighed in on some of the things we're talking about now i also got a number of comments about gun control dan why aren't you talking about gun control we understand there's other people talking about it but we want to hear your opinion. Well, listen, here's the, here's the thing that there are plenty of people covering gun control. There's no doubt about it. I know Sandy's covering and I know uh, Brian and Buster and others are talking about gun control. It's not that I don't want to talk it. It's not that I don't have <clears throat> some very strong opinions about it. No doubt about it. Um, I uh, was listening to, to Attorney General Meese this morning as he was uh, being interviewed by Newsmax yesterday. It's a great interview, but basically uh, Edwin Meese, who was the attorney general for Ronald Reagan and a great, great American, um, said, you know, that we can't see, we won't see, we shouldn't see any kind of executive order imposing gun control. And if we do, it would be unconstitutional and it would be grounds for impeachment. Now, that's good. I mean, the grounds for impeachment thing is good. But the reporter already pointed out a number of other issues that were grounds for impeachment, and nobody's done anything about it. So the question is, it's grounds for impeachment. That's nice. Are we going to do anything? Does Congress, are they ready, willing, able, able being having the backbone to start proceedings on impeachment? That's a whole other story. But anyway, so I haven't been covering it because it's getting covered. And here's the other thing. I think there are the greatest thing that that has happened by for Republicans benefit for Democrats benefit for the president's benefit is gun control because everybody's talking about gun control and nobody's talking about the fiscal crises that we're in right now it has removed the focus from Benghazi it has removed the focus from uh, other executive orders and, and, and other issues. And it has removed the focus on raising the debt ceiling and allowing the spending to continue. It has been an incredibly well orchestrated distraction for the President of the United States, for Democrats, and by the way, yes, for Republicans. That's what everybody's talking about. Even The Republicans that I've seen interviewed talking about gun control. We're about to see the country well on its way to bankruptcy. Bankruptcy. And we're talking about gun control as we should. I do. Let me, well, since we're on the topic... There was a uh, great article this morning in reference to gun control. I think I sent it out. So on my Facebook page, facebook.com slash financial issues. 
And if I can find it, um, it, it was a it was a great article. But I did put it, sent it out on Twitter, put it on um, my Facebook page, and I don't know where it is. But basically, it's kind of it's kind of no good because I can't remember, I can't remember all the numbers that were in it because it's important. I'll find it. I'll find it. Uh, try to find it at the break. But anyway, um, uh, here it is. So it, it comes. It, it was in the Wall Street Journal this morning, by the way, and it, it's talking about uh, gun control and what happened in nineteen uh, after nineteen seventy six. I think it was 76, after 1976 when they enacted, yes, 1976 when they enacted a gun ban in Washington, D.C., in the District of Columbia because the murder rate and the crimes were out of control. It takes you through a bit of a timeline. So not only did they enact gun control, they you couldn't even own a gun or use a gun in your own home. You could have it, but it had to have a trigger lock on it. And you are not allowed to remove the trigger lock, even if you were being robbed by gunpoint, you couldn't use that gun. Then in 1995, they had a recovery unit. They were trying to uh, continue to waging war all the way to 1995 on guns, and they were trying to confiscate guns. They confiscated 282 guns. Anyway, what the report indicates is that the gun ban emboldened criminals. They were like, this is the greatest thing in the world. We can, you know, we, we are, our, uh, you know, situation has changed dramatically because being concerned about being shot is no longer a concern right now. We basically have free reign over the city. Now, in 1976, the thing that spurred the ban was that homicides were rising. Violent crime was increasing. And in it had gone up to 369 in 1988 from 188 before the ban was put into place. By 1993, gun violence or homicides alone had reached 454. So remember, before the ban, it was 188. After the ban, by 1993, it had reached 454. Guns were confiscated. 283, that was all they were able to round up. It continued to go up. In 2007, a panel for the U.S. Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia Circuit ruled that the city's gun ban was unconstitutional, and it was overridden. This was in in 2007. So since the gun ban has been struck down, murders in the District of Columbia went from where it was at its high point to 2008. It was struck down in 2007. In 2008, the murder rate was 88. 88. Oh, I'm sorry. No, after the ban, it dropped down to 186 in 2008. And then in 2012, it was 208. Um, I mean, 88. 88. Uh, could that mean that gun ownership could actually stop crime? Look at Switzerland. Look at the District of Columbia from 1976 to 2012. Anyway, the executive orders are coming out today. We're going to hear, or at least the president's plan. We're going to see what he does by way of executive order. Then we'll sit back and watch to see to see if the um, Congress has the guts to do anything about it, to start impeachment proceedings. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, Stock futures are pretty much flat. Uh, They went negative, uh, came up to about flat. The U.S. stock indexes um, did fall, and primarily due to uh, 
the overseas markets. Investors got a little nervous ahead of a, a big day of earnings. That's why they went down. But then Goldman came out with some pretty decent earnings. J.P. Morgan came out with very decent earnings. The banks are driven by fees. Fees were up dramatically. Uh, they've had some very good earnings report. And the market then came off of that. We also had companies like Wendy's, who, by the way, is on my buy list. 